Um, begin, uh, guys, by asking just about the, the casting to start off with. I mean, I think uh -huh. Rafe is one of my favourite actors uh, working right. in Britain. Mm -hmm. today. He has this kind of relatability. How essential is it that in a film like this we have that character that we can just completely invest in and sort of see ourselves in? Well, especially in this, because in horror we're often confessing some weakness or finding common ground with... Uh, you know, some sort of, uh, you know, he's got a kind of a tragic flaw in the opening of this movie, you could argue. And uh, so I think being able to relate to Rafe and relate to what, you know, the mistakes that he made was essential. And, uh, you know, if he didn't have, you know, he's got such a kind of charisma that you can, you're drawn to him. If he didn't have that, I don't, I, I, we'd be at risk that you wouldn't get behind him and you'd hate the protagonist, which would be only, tragic. I was only to about how Andy Serkis sort of came on board in, in this project. It was his company uh, behind it, it's, um, his, the Imaginarium. They were the ones that bought the rights to the book. Um, so th yeah, I mean, he's been, they've all been behind it since, since day one. You can never tell, you never tell he's there. It could be any of <laughs> us right now. He's behind the scenes, yeah. He's, he's uh, no, he, 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 ping pong balls. <laughs> recognized you. I was wondering, Joe, what it's like writing horror, because so much about what makes a great horror movie is the kind of the sound design, the, the set design, and there, there's yeah. so much, of, it's such a kind of visceral kind of genre where it's, all, it's, it's so much about what you kind of see. Mm. I was wondering about how you go about writing something scary. Do you read it and think, well, that doesn't, does it seem scary when you've written it, or does it need the kind of yeah. director's involvement to then sort of come to life in that regard? I mean, yeah, it's difficult. It's difficult. You're never going to read it back necessarily and, 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 and think it's... Scary, but I think you just have to have an image of the potential of the scene in your head and try and, and try. So you have to imagine something scary and then try and write it down. But I'm, I mean, I'm like a complete coward, to be honest, as well as my main concern. I don't watch a lot of horror movies even. Um, I haven't seen yours yet, by the way. Um, so my concern was that the things that I think are scary would in fact not be <laughs> scary at all. It would be very helpful to have David come on board and... Um, and make them. Well, you do you kind of have a moment of inspiration and then you spend a year working on something yeah. trying to get back to that moment of inspiration because you lose it. So it's all about keeping it fresh in some way or, or being able to see it again because once you've looked at something 30 times, whether it be on a page or mm. you know in the edit, you can no longer see it. It's hard to measure the audience experience at that point. That's kind of the name of the game. Because I mean, even if you're able to get scared watching this back, are you able to, mm -hmm. to, to, to at this, the moments where the audience will kind of gasp, but is it just one of those things where you've seen it so many times, you've been so kind of involved in the, kind mm -hmm. of in the mechanics of it, that is that impossible? Absolutely, I mean, it's a complete act of faith. So it's when you see it with an audience and they react to it that it reminds you almost of where you began, in yes. a sense. I've had that experience a few times. Yeah, you get scared of how bloody good it is. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> And then, I mean, one of my favourite horror movies is, is Blair Witch, and because mm -hmm. what I love, and I think this sort of abides by a very sort of similar thing, which is that it doesn't show you too much, which is what I kind of mm -hmm. love. And I'm just wondering about, was that a big influence? Or was it quite nice not having that, of having more freedom in a sense that you didn't, because it was not a found footage film, I guess yeah. it gives you a freedom to be more kind of overtly cinematic with how you tell the story. Oh, uh, yeah, man, I've written a found footage film, I hate it. I do. <laughs> I hate it. I mean, it didn't get made. <laughs> I should say. Uh, it's not been made. Uh, I made a found footage film. It was a blast. I yeah. loved it. Um, yeah. Man, I'm sure yours was good. <laughs> um, we tried really hard. It, it was, uh, no, I mean, there's, a, you know, at least with found footage, you're, you know, you, you have this device that allows for a certain obscurity. Um, yeah, I think, I think it's just a different, it's a whole different uh, language when you're making a movie like this because you're sort of choosing to show what you do and you don't show. And if you're not careful, then, you know, the audience will feel the hand of the director in those moments. And I think a lot of times, at least particularly with this, I'm hoping that they're not aware of the cinema in that regard and they're just kind of lost in the experience with these characters as much as possible. Because, I mean, David, you do seem to kind of remain in, in this genre, but do you see yourself sort of trying your hand in, in other sort of maybe comedies, dramas, sort of going forward, or do you see yourself sort of sticking in, in horror? I don't know that I'd have the guts to make something that purports itself to be a comedy <laughs> at the top, necessarily. But uh, yeah, all forms of genre are of interest to me. You know, I mean, I think, uh, I like the idea that, there, that there's a measured expectation. You know, the audience can, you know, have a sense of what the rules are of a particular kind of movie, because then we get to break them or play to them and relate to them. And uh, yeah, that's fun, that's of interest to me. Uh, and Joe, I mean, obviously you're here with Days of My, my Days of Mercy yeah. as well. I mean, that seems, I haven't seen that yet, but it seems slightly different uh, to the picture. Yeah, um, yeah. What can you tell us about that, to sort of, particularly to UK audiences who aren't aware of it yet? Uh, yeah, it's a romantic drama with Ellen Page and Kate Mara, sort of, um, set in America. Uh, it's very different. It's just, yes, it's like a sort of, it's a yeah, dramatic romantic film. Um, I was writing them at the same time, so it was important not to get them mixed up. Um, but uh, yeah, it couldn't be more different. But 
no one <laughs> no one goes into any woods and gets chased <laughs> by any monsters. Um, so, you know, but still go and see it, despite that. And just my, my final question just about being here yeah. and presenting this film in Toronto, because this is, this is in the Midnight Madness section. Have you ever witnessed a Midnight Madness film here before? And if so, you must be looking forward to it because they are completely mad. Oh, nice. Absolutely. Yeah, I was here in 2015 <laughs> with Southbound. So, I yeah, yeah, I downloaded the Midnight Madness experience. I was saying it kind of sticks with you. I mean, you don't, as a filmmaker, you it's hard not to think of that audience when you're creating something like this, you know, in a weird way. This is the front line of where people will experience it. So we're, you know, obviously very happy to be here. Yeah. Thanks so much for your time, guys. Yeah, yeah, indeed. Thank you. Cheers. Ladies and gentlemen, you're watching Hey You Guys. Hey You Guys, huh? Is that from the Goonies? Nice. Hey You Guys.